turning a custom GPT that talks to PDFs into its own web app is actually pretty simple. And I know a lot of people get hung up on one step in the process. We don't have a file uploader button like we do in ChatGPT. And if you were to upload a PDF document, ChatGPT would use Code Interpreter to read the PDF. But it can be done, so let's build this out into our own website. Okay, here I am in Bubble. I have a brand new page called Chat with PDF, and I haven't showed how to set up the API calls in a bit. Let's walk through that quickly here. So in the Plugins tab, we're gonna install the API connector. We're gonna make an open AI API call. I'm gonna click expand here. And we need two shared headers. We need content dash type. That value is application slash JSON. And then authorization will be equal to bear space your open AI secret key. To get your secret key, head on over to platform.openai.com. If you don't have an account already, you'll register for a developer account. On the left side, you're gonna select API keys, create new secret key. I'm gonna call this PDF chat. Click create secret key, copy this key, and then paste it into this input box here. For this workflow, we're only going to need one API call and that is either with GPT 3.5 Turbo or GPT-4. So I'm gonna expand GPT. We want to use it as an action. The data type is JSON. It's a post request, and we're posting to this URL, api.openai.com slash v1 slash chat slash completions. For the JSON body, it's gonna look like this. If you don't wanna pause the video and copy this text, I just went to the documents in platform.openai.com, find the text generation under capabilities, we're gonna to go to chat completions, and then you can copy this. This default one gives you a system message, a user message, and an assistant message. Or you can go to the playground, fool around with some of the settings here, add a message, something like count to 10, click submit, and then click view code. And you'll see the extra parameters here like temperature, max tokens, top P, frequency penalty, and presence penalty. I find that with the newer models, you don't really need the frequency penalty and presence penalty. That's more for the older models. But I'd copy this JSON body and then paste it into bubble. Now you'll notice that a few of these keywords are in between caret brackets, like model, system content, user content, max tokens, temperature, and putting those keywords in caret brackets makes that data dynamic. And it's gonna pop up a bunch of input boxes down here. This is for your first API call. So just to see how it works, I'm asking the system to count to 10. I'm using the cheapest GPT 3.5 turbo model, max tokens 500, it can even be 10. And then if I click reinitialize call, it gives me a successful result and a lot of these details are not needed within your app, but we are gonna need message content. That's the result we get back. So click save. And now that this data is dynamic, we can modify it in different places of our app. So now that the API call is set up, we are going to add one more plugin. This plugin is free in Bubble, and it allows you to turn PDFs into basic text, which will allow us to interact with it at a later time. So go to plugins, and the plugin you're gonna be searching for is called Convert PDF to Text. You add plugins by clicking the Add Plugins button, then searching for it here. There it is, click Install. If you scroll to the bottom of the plugins, you can see what actions and data events that it opens up in your application. So this simple plugin is only opening up one action, and it's called Convert PDF to Text. So in design, we need a way for our users to upload their PDF documents. And the easiest way to do this is with the file uploader element. Scrolling down, it's right here. I'm gonna drag it onto the page. I'm gonna make it a lot smaller. Let's make it 150 pixels wide and 40 pixels tall. I'm gonna change the text instead of file, let's say PDF. Let's center it on the page, make it 25 pixels from the top. And in this custom GPT, I want the user to be able to ask questions to the PDF document. 
which means we're gonna have to add an input box. So I'm gonna drag it onto the page. Let's make it a bit larger, maybe 250 pixels wide. The height, I can go 40. Let's center it on the page, make it 25 pixels from the elements above it. And for the placeholder text, I'm gonna write, type your question here. Now we'll need a button. This button is gonna start the workflow. Let's drag it in. I'm gonna write ask in the button. Now it's a little too big, maybe 100 pixels. And we'll do 40 again, everything's 40 here. Make it a fixed height. Center it on the page. It actually might be better to group these elements together. I'm gonna group them in a row container. Let's clean this up a bit. I'm gonna make the group 25 pixels from the input box above it. Let's space these elements out a bit, maybe 15 pixels. And I'm gonna select fit width to content. Perfect. Let's call this input box question. And I'm gonna click on the button so we can start creating the workflow. I'm gonna click add workflow. When the ask button is clicked, we're gonna add an action. First, we're gonna to go to plugins. Remember that convert PDF to text plugin? We're gonna use that here. The PDF URL is going to be insert dynamic data. It's gonna be file uploaders value. The next action, we're gonna to go to plugins, GPT. For the system content message, it's gonna be whatever the user wrote in that question input. So we're taking that value. And for the content, we can go insert dynamic data, result of step one, and it's gonna autofill its text. So we're preparing the GPT for the question by putting that in the system content message. And then the actual content is the text in the PDF document. Now, how do we display the result on the page? Well, I'm gonna to go to design. We need to add one more element. Let's make this a text element. I'm gonna make it 500 pixels wide. We're gonna center it on the page. It's gonna be 25 pixels from the top. Let's go a min height of 50. Then we'll double click outside of the page. Click the I button up here. Add a new custom state. Let's call the state result. And that state type is gonna be text. Hit create. Now in that text element, I can insert dynamic data and it's gonna be that custom state's result, which will show on the page. I'm gonna to go to workflow, add one more action, element, set state, and we're setting the custom state result as the result of step two, choices, first items, message content. Bubble works in layers, which is why that seems like a lot of text, but basically it's just grabbing whatever we get back from GPT 3.5 Turbo. Okay, let's test it out. I'm gonna to click to upload a PDF. I have a sample PDF document here. I'm gonna ask it, what is this PDF used for? Let's click the ask button. And this is what we get as a result. This PDF appears to be a placeholder document that is used when actual documentation is not yet available or ready for distribution. And if I open that PDF, you can see it's just a sample PDF. It's a placeholder documentation and our custom GPT got it right. If you want to add even more features into your custom AI app, turn your custom GPT into its own website. I've designed a course specifically for this process. A link is in the description below. I recommend viewing this syllabus, looking at the free templates that you get, and watching the course introduction. And if you like this video, here are two more on the screen right now. I've catered them to your video interests. If you can do this for me, click one of them, watch it, learn something new about AI. I'll talk to you in there later.